My name is Hydrun Maya de Cruyff. I'm the Secretary General of the Austrian Association of Public Services. We are the Austrian section of the European Union Social Partnership. On the panel, I welcome warmly Evelyn Regner, who is a member of the European Parliament, locally rooted in Vienna, and a real knowledge carrier if it comes down to European Union legislation. Jörg Wilhelm, he is representing, because never far from the European Parliament, there is the European Commission. He is representing the European Commission here in Vienna since the year 2015, and has also a long-lasting history as a press worker. Kieran McCarthy, he is a councillor in Cork, welcome very much, member of the Committee of the Region and very active in the urban agenda. Last but not least, Nico Bates, a Dutch urban envoy who is actually shaping the urban agenda. And uh, we heard a lot on the topics of urban agenda, European social housing. Nico, you are supposed to be the father of the urban agenda. And especially the Netherlands are promoting this new way of cooperation across different levels of government. What is your intention? What are your goals? And where should it lead to? Thank you very much. And, and thank you for your kind words. I merely led the process. And the process started already in 1997. It was then the Dutch presidency as well. But the commission made a an announcement said we need an urban agenda for the EU. It was picked up again during the Dutch presidency in 2004 and then the 2016 was approaching. Why is the Netherlands so keen on the urban agenda? Simply because in our history cities have played a very important role and this goes back to the 14th century already. But we're not the only one. For instance Italy has a long history of strong cities, Germany cities are strong in France, there are many many other countries who shared. And the process sort of culminated in 2014-15 when a lot of European institutions, including the Commission, especially the European Parliament, the Committee of the Regions, all said we need an urban agenda. We need to give cities a voice to talk about better regulation, better access to funding and better knowledge sharing. And with the Netherlands, we sort of directed this process, which had no less than 38 stakeholders, 38 different parties contributed in a very active way. So it was a whole process which developed in the European Union. And it's about bringing the citizens closer to the Union. And their habitat is usually cities. 72% live in cities. And it's cities that need to have this voice. And there we, we managed to get this urban agenda where all the pressing themes on smart, inclusive, sustainable and green uh, and were addressed. And these partnerships started as pilots. And one of the first pilots was housing, where Slovakia and Vienna were the coordinators. But we got partners on board. And when the first call came, who would like to be in this urban agenda? More than 250 European cities applied and were enthusiastic. And now more than 100 are actually working on it. So that's one of the reasons why we think this process is interest is, is utterly important. The fruits are now here. You hear the commission enthusiasm by Commissioner Kretu. You hear the, the mayor of Vienna talking about it. It's a long story, but it's the, only the beginning of a story. Thank you. We heard it's only the beginning. Thank you very much. But if we then look around and visit other cities, for example, the city of Cork, you are combining in your function actually two heads. On the one hand, you are responsible for the city of Cork. On the other hand, you are very much active in the committee of the region. Can you please let us a bit know why are cities active in the um, housing movement in Europe? What is the situation in Cork? What is your motivation to spend energy and time? And as not everybody is familiar maybe with the uh, Committee of the Regions, some words on that topic as well, please. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning to everyone. Um, I've got over an Irish accent, so hopefully I won't actually speak very quickly, uh, um, which you're going to miss a lot. You, you've asked me a lot of questions. Um, I'm a city councillor in Cork in the south of Ireland for the last nine years. I'm on the housing committee in my city for the last nine years. We have 10,000 social housing um, units in my city, so one, one tenth of our housing is actually social housing. Um, there is deemed a, a housing crisis in Ireland, as we've heard this morning, elsewhere in the EU and kind of globally as well. Um, four years ago, 
I was appointed to the European Committee of the Regions uh, and I found myself in European politics and I had to learn about uh, the urban agenda and I became a rapporteur on the urban agenda. Um, and I suppose I've gone from the local to the European, um, but ultimately with the European Committee of the Regions, if you're not familiar with it, it's an opinion body. Um, it gives opinions to the European Commission and to the European Parliament, uh, and we're dependent on the uh, MEPs and the Commission to take our opinions on board. And there are every member state is represented. There's 350 kind of members. There's nine from um, the Irish um, delegation. Um, but if our opinions aren't taken on board, then there's actually a problem. Um, and I have to say the European Commission works really closely with us. Um, we work very closely with Commissioner Kretsu. Um, and the European Parliament, we have what I call a, a good, bad and ugly relationship with the European Parliament. Sometimes um, MEP rapporteurs we get on really well with, and sometimes MEP rapporteurs we don't get on as, as well with. Um, when it comes to housing... Um, we've already heard this morning that housing, housing is described as it's not a competence um, within the kind of the EU policy kind of sector. Uh, and, and for the last four years, I can tell you, I haven't really heard about housing in the Committee of the Regions. Um, there was a known initiative opinion um, that was done by Mr. Ickman Inman. If you do a known initiative opinion, it's not really deemed as an official opinion. You did it on your own. Um, and a known initiative opinion usually doesn't get priority. So I can tell you that there are priorities like um, environment, transport, broadband, the digital single market, energy, um, the future of work, where we're working in all of those. But housing is probably like priority number 20. And I can say that, and, I, and I'm saying that, I'm saying that actually honestly. It's a, I'm not saying it's not a priority. Um, it, like when I'm on the ground in Cork, the, uh, and I can tell you it's actually roads and housing is the main priority in the city that I represent. So I think there's a fragmented, broken relationship from the ground all the way to the, to the top. And I have to say, I work very closely with commission um, officials, uh, and I've met the uh, officials from DG Regio, and they're very um, ambitious, um, and they've got a great vision when it comes to e the EU urban agenda. But it, 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 there seems to be broken links, like a, an internet website, where some of the links work and some of the links don't work. Uh, and th th those links, um, those 404s, I think, uh, need, to, need to be fixed. Um, so I'm not too sure that, that, that f for me, uh, and actually Mr. Ickman, in his opinion, um, he actually did know uh, on housing, his own initiative opinion, did call for better coordination between uh, the local level uh, and the European level, um, and also between the different, actually, commissions. Um, and one of the very interesting things that's coming out for the Committee of the Regions at the moment is the European Pillar of Social Rights, uh, where housing is a, an element of that. And I, I have to say, in the last six or seven months, housing has been discussed a lot more. Um, but it certainly needs more visibility and more prioritisation. Um, so those are some of my, probably my opening remarks. So I think this is a clear question in the direction of the European Parliament, but also towards the Commission. In how far is affordable housing a topic in the Parliament, and how do you see these growing networks of the city in your legal decision-making process? Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, as being Viennese, uh, Viennese member of the European Parliament, I take the luxury right now to, to speak in my mother tongue. Um, Gratulation an die Städtepartnerschaft Wohnen. Das ist das Erste, was ich sagen möchte. Äh, ganz handfeste Arbeit liegt am Tisch, die auch gut für uns europäische Abgeordnete ist, die wir uns mit den Themen beschäftigen. Äh, ich bin selbst als europäische Abgeordnete in erster Linie damit beschäftigt, äh, mir anzuschauen, was kann man machen bei den Steuern, wie kann es gerechter werden. Bei der Finanzmarktregulierung, Private Equities, Hedge Funds. Und insofern schließe ich gerade dort an, wo die Vorrednerinnen aufgehört haben, nämlich, dass das ein handfestes Thema ist, Housing. Es geht um ein Grundrecht, genauso wie Gesundheit, wie Wasser, Zugang zu Wasser, geht es darum, dass es ein Grundrecht ist und wir hierin natürlich ausgesprochen verletzlich sind. Alle Menschen sind das. Und insofern hat das sehr wohl was mit dem Europäischen Parlament zu tun und mit unserer Arbeit. Es gibt einen Bericht, der ist jetzt schon einige Jahre her, von Karima Delli, der sich mit Housing äh, äh, beschäftigt. Allerdings äh, sehe ich das wesentlich breiter und äh, deshalb, wenn ich hier zuhöre, springt bei mir immer gleich, äh, äh, also geht, geht bei mir gleich immer alles gleich durch, so durch, durch den Kopf, was können wir als die gewählten Vertreterinnen und Vertreter der Menschen im Europäischen Parlament tun, nicht nur problematisieren, die Probleme liegen auf dem Tisch, da haben wir sehr vieles davon gehört, 
sondern wo können wir ansetzen und was ist auch machbar. Und eine, einer der Anhaltspunkte, die machbar sind, das ist das europäische Semester. Da sind wir es schon gewöhnt, da sind die Hausaufgaben zu machen. Hier hat jeder Staat seine Aufgaben zu erledigen und hier könnten wir ansetzen, ohne dass wir da jetzt großartige Vertragsänderungen oder sonst irgendwelche Revolutionen in der Europäischen Union äh, durchführen müssten, obwohl ich die natürlich auch sehr gerne hätten. Es soll nicht so sein, dass Menschen mehr als ein Viertel ihres Einkommens ausgeben müssen für Wohnen. Das Leben ist teuer, wir haben so vieles zu finanzieren, ein Viertel ist genug. Und das ist eine Forderung, die können wir auch aufnehmen. Dafür das politische Bewusstsein zu schaffen, halte ich für eine ganz, ganz großartige Aufgabe, die uns als europäische Abgeordnete aufgetragen wird, das rauszuposaunen gegenüber Kommission, gegenüber Rat, gegenüber all denjenigen, die damit involviert sind. Und ich denke mal, da haben wir schon einiges vor uns. Andere Forderungen liegen auch auf dem Tisch. Ich habe jetzt ganz aufmerksam zugehört. Die Datenlage, also das ist schon etwas, was wirklich machbar ist. Die Kommission hat großartige Köpfe, hier objektivierte Daten, ein funktionierendes Monitoring zu haben, das dann auch die Grundlage ist, im europäischen Semester da einzuhaken. Das ist etwas, das können wir mitnehmen und ich denke mal, da können wir sehr, sehr vieles lernen von der Städtepartnerschaft Wohnen, auch von all der Vorarbeit, die von Ihnen äh, als diejenigen, die da mittendrin sind, als Bürgermeisterinnen, als Vertreter im Ausschuss der Regionen, als all diejenigen, die da äh, täglich was damit zu tun haben. Und ich denke mal, jetzt ist auch ein sehr guter Anhalt, ein guter Ansatzpunkt. Wir haben bald Wahlen zum Europäischen Parlament und Wohnen ist ein Grundrecht. Wohnen ist ein Grundrecht, mit dem sich nicht nur äh, all diejenigen herumschlagen sollten, die eben lokal versuchen, was für die Menschen zu machen, sondern das ist etwas, das eben Städte eint in ganz Europa und natürlich eigentlich in der ganzen Welt. Aber jetzt fangen wir mal in, in Europa an. So, we are starting in Europe and apparently the European Commission is going to hear a lot of noise coming from the Committee of the Regions, from the Urban Agenda and from the European Parliament. How does the Commission view the initiatives of the cities, first of all? And second of all, we were hearing about data. Evelyn Regner was referring to data. Do you think you can put that already in the work plan of the Commission? Yeah, thank you very much. This morning I have not heard noise, but very constructive and good things. And I love to hear them, especially about the um, uh, European social pillar, that uh, we can use this as an instrument to bring the topic more back uh, in, in front. And uh, this only proves how important it was that we uh, adopted that uh, European social pillar in Gothenburg. And not all member states' governments are so happy with it. You shouldn't forget that either. Uh, and I'm extremely happy also that uh, uh, Abgeordnete Regner brought up the um, European semester as a framework, which is something which has been growing in importance and in cloud, um, from soft law to something which is being taken rather seriously. And we introduced last year for the first time a social scoreboard into European semester, which already was a big step ahead from uh, originally more uh, budgetary and uh, financial criteria to also adding some social criteria. So this fits very well into this into this perspective. As, as such, you have uh, seen it uh, and heard it also from Orna, I think very much in detail that for us as European Commission, it's a very cross-cutting uh, topic, housing, and we are tackling in, uh, it that way. It's not only Commissioner Kretsu, who uh, you have seen here, who is uh, dealing with it. And I think the, the point that we uh, all together brought up and uh, initiated and then uh, are implementing the urban agenda shows that we are trying to see this in a very cross-cutting and, and all-encompassing way. Uh, of course, uh, and you have heard this very often this morning already, in legislative terms we cannot do so much. One of the reasons is uh, something which you hear very often, in particular in Austria, subsidiarity. Member states will uh, shout out loud if we start legislating uh, on every uh, little thing. So those uh, for those of you putting very high hopes in that uh, should also talk to their own governments who at the same time start to uh, try to stop uh, uh, things being regulated or um, or solved at the European level. But this doesn't keep us from trying to do what we can. Uh, most obviously, and this is symbolized by the fact that Commissioner Kretzo is in charge, uh, is uh, through financial means uh, in two ways. First, by promoting your cooperation, uh, but then also by concrete projects. Uh, you have uh, maybe seen the figures of EU cohesion funding going to um, 
on the one hand, urban areas as such, uh, the figures would show that even half of our cohesion money goes to urban areas in general, but of course not only into housing. Uh, currently, we would uh, estimate that around 1.5 billion euros of EU funding are uh, focused on on building housing in general. And even this, uh, we should look at it from different angles. One is the uh, the uh, grants, no, the subsidies, uh, the, uh, but then uh, keep in mind also the, um, the loans, uh, which uh, traditionally have been going through the uh, European Investment Bank, but now also since the Juncker Commission through the, through the FC, European Fund for Strategic Investment, the Juncker Fund, uh, where we are particularly closely uh, focusing on um, energy efficiency also in buildings. And uh, I, I cannot underline this enough. And I think on this example, you can explain a lot of things, uh, especially now that we are having the, the UNFCC COP in Katowice going on, how important climate uh, action is, um, and which challenges this also uh, entails. So uh, we all want energy efficient buildings and we as EU uh, try to promote this on the one hand by regulation on, on standards. On the other hand, we want to promote it through grants. And then thirdly, we promote it through, um, through uh, loans through EIB or FC. But then, uh, of course, all these energy standards, energy efficiency stand standards make housing more expensive, make building more expensive because you cannot just put the one uh, one glass window there, which you have been putting for 100 years. Now you have to put three glass windows, a highly uh, certified high quality, and this will make building more expensive. And uh, we have to deal with this as well. So uh, all is uh, linked to each other, and we have to try to, to bring those all into a balance. And um, and if you take for the example of energy efficiency, you have to then also argue for long term. If you say, okay, now it's more expensive to uh, build more expensively, but in the long run, then the uh, running costs will be lower. Uh, so just uh, just to illustrate that, um, uh, as Anna also illustrated, we are thinking of this from, in very different angles and trying to square this circle, which is not always obvious. Thank you. Indeed, it's not always that easy. Um, we heard a lot about the urban agenda and maybe a question to the four of you. Um, I ask you also to be brief in your answer. What should be the follow-up based on the results of the urban agenda? Because I think it's not in the interest of anybody in that room that there is another silo built and then we move on to the next topic. So what should be a concrete follow-up? What is the next step? Where should it lead to? What are your dreams? Christmas is close. Please, the way you wish. I suppose I, I have met the coordinators of the 12 partnerships and I find them very dynamic and I find them very innovative. Uh, and I want to say well done to the housing partnership for even hosting this. And I think we could even go bigger to even create a European summit on housing. I think we need to go bigger. I have to say, and, I, and, I, and that was an idea presented to me by a delegate this morning. Um, I think we have these 12 action plans. <laughs> they need to be funded. Um, many of the people on the on the partnerships are doing it in a volunteer sense in their own time. Um, cities are sending their own env envoys and, and people to get, take part in. I think if, if nothing happens with these partnerships and action plans, it would be an awful shame. Uh, and I think people will get disillusioned very, very quickly. I acknowledge the fact that within cohesion policy, I think six percent has been kind of is going to be allocated in the next MFF towards, we say, urban issues. There's an urban innovative action program which I, I find really great as well. Um, but I think it just needs more prioritisation. I, I like to see if there's. 20 um, actions within each one of the action plans themselves, I'd like to see at least five or six are done at a minimum um, and, that we act, and that we prioritize those. Um, I'm really worried that we're coming up to what I call European elections and that there's going to be a lot of um, momentum lost and that we'll have a new um, European kind of parliament. Um, and we don't know what's going to emerge from that. We're going to have new commissioners. We're going to have a new a commissioner for regional policy. We're not going to know what she or he, he or she's new priority is going to be. And so there's a huge role for the Committee of the Regions. Um, I have been thinking, actually, over the last 48 hours, we should bring in each one of the partnerships to the Committee of the Regions, start blending in some of your ideas into the opinion documents themselves that we're actually pursuing. Um, 
I know tomorrow I have to go back to Brussels tomorrow morning. We've got a huge debate um, tomorrow with Commissioner Kretsu on cohesion policy. Um, there's several opinions going through. Um, and we also have a, a debate, we say, on Brexit tomorrow with Michelle Barney. There are other issues as well. Um, but I, what we need to do in terms of housing, and I'm going to repeat it, is that it doesn't need to, it, it can't be priority number 20. <coughs> like, it needs to go from the top three or four. And I and I and that needs to change. And I, as someone who's a councillor on the ground, I get emails every week from people going, "I'm struggling with my housing." If I tell them from that national, local, or European, going, "Oh well, there's red tape and administration," it means very little to that person who's struggling on the ground. And some of the examples that Liliani uh, uh, mentioned as well this morning, the people that she's meeting on the ground, that gap between the top and the bottom needs to close down a lot more. Um, so th those are just some of my thoughts. We, I think the, the Committee of the Regions has a lot more work to do with the partnerships and we will be talking about that as, as probably the day goes on as well. Nico. Thank you. Well, to a certain extent, I'm already living my dream because when we signed the Pact of Amsterdam and the ink was not yet dry, people said, where are the concrete results? Because this, we need concrete results. Here we stand today, three years later, or two and a half years later, with 12 partnerships, where, with 10 action plans, with over 100 different actions, with more than 100 cities participating, with an urban agenda, which is mentioned now in the official documents of the, of the European Commission. Not in my wildest dream did I think that there would be more than 200 people working daily on the urban agenda all over the European Union. But what is next? And that is, of course, how to get actions and proposed actions into real results. And that's where we need the Commission. We need the Member States. We need the cities. We need everybody on board. And the hard work only starts. But what is, what is on the horizon is first two more partnerships, culture and cultural heritage, which is closely related to what Barcelona said to a city which is under pressure simply because it's so much culture that everybody wants to be there. The other is about security in, in, in cities and in public places, where we are f faced with the threat of terrorism, but there are many other threats on, on security in cities. And then there is the thinking of more themes. But what is most important, and this I think what the German presidency in 2020 will provide, is the platform, how do we continue to give the cities a voice? Because the themes... When you talk about digital transition, energy transition, climate change, poverty, housing, especially housing here in this forum, they're not gone after an action plan has been constructed after three years. So we need to give to think of a method how to keep giving cities a voice to influence the policies of the European Union. And it's about bringing the Union closer to the citizens. One of the quotes is from, from when we had a partnership and a meeting, and there was a small European city where a person said, for the first time I have a feeling that this European Union is my own. And when we had on a similar basis from the Commission, people sat at the table on multi-level governance, on equality, out of their Brussels office, joining them and saying, well, now I get a feeling of what actually is on the ground, where it all matters, and this is what we, my future will be, keep giving cities a voice with an urban agenda of the EU. Well, well, what matters for the Parliament? Also, the idea with the European Rat gefällt mir schon einmal sehr gut. Da kann man Bewusstsein schaffen und Wohnen ist eindeutig ein unglaublich wichtiges alltägliches Thema, genauso wie Gesundheit, genauso wie Arbeit. Da spüren Menschen, das geht mich persönlich was an. Und da Europä europäisch voneinander zu lernen und sich zusammenzutun, zu stärken, das macht absolut Sinn. Ich bin Sozialdemokratin und unsere neue Parteivorsitzende, die hat einen wunderbaren Vorschlag gemacht, nämlich äh, das Wohnen, ähm, also dass es spürbar sein soll, dass äh, Wohnen nicht zu teuer ist. Warum nicht die Mehrwertsteuer aufs Wohnen senken? Das ist möglich über die ähm, EU-Mehrwertsteuerrichtlinie, wenn hier keine äh, Steuern mehr zu entrichten sind. Das ist jetzt etwas, das würde man spüren, wenn man das so umlegt, in etwa in der Höhe einer Monatsmitte, wenn man das auf das ganze Jahr legt. Das heißt, das ist etwas, was Menschen sehr wohl spüren können, wo wir den europäischen Bezug auch haben. Es ist auch machbar, weil Länder wie Schweden beispielsweise haben das geschafft, Arzneimittel daraus zu nehmen. Also das ist schon etwas, was auch europäisch machbar ist. Und deshalb wünsche ich mir von Christkind, dass äh, die Idee des leistbaren Wohnens über das Steuerrecht möglich ist, auch europäisch. 
und dass wir natürlich auch noch weiter daran arbeiten und dann natürlich auch als europäische Abgeordnete die Kommission beackern, dass Wohnen eben etwas ist, was für alle möglich sein soll, uns alle irgendwie betrifft und dass wir bei äh, leistbarem Wohnen, Wohnen wirklich an die breite Masse denken, dass es alle Menschen im Mittelstand ermöglicht, sich bunt mit der Bevölkerung zu mischen in den Städten und dass man nicht mehr eineinhalb Stunden reinpendeln muss, wenn man eben ein Feuerwehrmann, eine Krankenschwester ist, sondern dass Wohnen und Arbeit an einem Ort möglich sein sollte. Thank you very much, Evelyn. Nico Bates mentioned uh, that he was not thinking that something like here can happen in his wildest dreams. What are the wildest dreams of the European Commission? <laughs> Civil servants don't dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, actually, we dream of uh, having... <laughs> <laughs> Those laughing loudest know me and know that I have some dreams. No, um, the, um, our dream is, uh, no, taking take it from there, as uh, civil servants, is of course to have a strong and uh, a European Union and united one. And here I, I would actually like to pick up what uh, Kirwin said, who was so optimistic, about uh, the pessimistic about the European elections and said, oh, everything will be stalled. All on the contrary, I think this is exactly the moment uh, where this can be brought forward, uh, where uh, candidates can uh, run on an agenda um, promoting these ideas, uh, because there are other candidates as also who run on different uh, platforms who say cows are more important than uh, than this we rather want to give more money to farmers uh, so why can't you then um, uh, as politicians use this as a way uh, us we as civil servants will then uh, happily implement it but uh, you see what the situation is Uh, and I see uh, the elections rather as a great opportunity to to uh, promote the ideas and uh, uh, the asks. And um, I think we have shown that uh, we are aware of it. We have tried to have a global visions, but we cannot uh, in the end set the priorities. Uh, but next year, 26th of May, is uh, is an opportunity to get these priorities more into the foreground, if you so wish. Thank you very Thank you very much. And I think we have some time left for uh, questions from the audience. I have um, this person here, Flo Klukas, in the first line, who already mentioned that she has something to say. Thank you. Can I, first of all, I hope on your behalf, thank our panel, because I think they've been super in the responses they've been giving. Um, I'd also like to thank the uh, Austrian Association of Cities and Towns who have invited me to this today. Um, it's been tremendous working with them and seeing how we can work together cross-country, cross-boundary. One other thing I wish to say before I, I make my point and ask my question is, I hope Brexit never happens because our place as a United Kingdom is in the heart of Europe. And I believe... <laughs> I believe with God's good grace, events in Parliament this week and next will mean that we will have a people's vote, which will mean that we can reverse that stupid decision that was made two years ago to save a political party. That was not right. It should not have happened. And certainly from my perspective, this is where I belong. This is my home. And isn't it wonderful that we're all here looking at housing for all so that everybody else can have a home too? I'm not going to repeat what's been said by colleagues here today, but I do want to make just a couple of points. Firstly, I'd like to cheer you. And that cheer is, I now live in a town called Cheltenham, which is about 115,000 people. And in Cheltenham, we have about 20% social housing, most of which is still owned by the council. When Margaret Thatcher said everything had to be sold, there was a, an election held through the tenants of social housing to ask them what they wanted, and they wanted to stay with the town council, and so they do. Two weeks ago, we decided that because the town is growing, because we want more social housing, because we want people to have affordable housing, we are going to invest 120 million euro in that over the next few years, 
and there will be an additional 200 million euro, which will go to re renovating, to renewing our existing social housing. It still isn't enough. It's a lot of money for a small town, but it isn't enough. And that's why I look at my colleagues here, the Committee of the Regions, the Urban Agenda, European Parliament and Commission, and I say to them, we need to do more quickly. And the reason we do is very simple. And it's this. If the European Union is going to survive, action has to be taken. And it has to be taken because the first thing that will happen when people are not able to get into their houses because there aren't enough of them, or into their apartments because there aren't enough of them, is the whole idea of freedom of movement will be challenged. And it will be, why is this person coming here from Bulgaria and taking a house in my town when I need a, a new house? Why am I paying more rent because those people are coming here? This isn't only a matter of housing, though the housing is extremely important. It's actually how we make sure the European Union survives. And what I'd like to ask, if I may, is this. We do have elections next year. Those elections will also result in a new commission. I would like to ask that we, as people who are here committed to social housing, insist that a meeting is held with the new commissioner, together with all the work that's been done through the Committee of the Regions, the CEMR, through organisations like the Austrian Association of Cities and Towns, through all of the others here, that we actually say to the commissioners and the new commission, this cannot wait. You have to do this. You have to respond. And there are mechanisms. The new MFF, for example, will provide some mechanisms. There are other mechanisms that can be brought into play through the Central Bank and the European Investment Bank. And if we can change things, and if we can do things like making sure that those who are investing through offshore companies and saving tax, if we can do that across Europe, why can't we make it something like that that stops the sort of speculation and the sort of evil that is happening as a result of people investing and buying towns and cities out of housing for local people. There has to be a way to do that through the European Investment Bank, through the European Central Bank, to make sure that we can actually keep those houses for ourselves, keep the land for ourselves, and make sure that we can offer affordable housing for all, as the uh, Anna here says we wish to do. Thank you very much. I think there was a very clear question. And maybe we can get a very short and hopefully precise answer from the panel here. What are we doing in order to make the new commission listen to all the work which was done here, to all the initiative, and hopefully also starting with housing in the next work program? I think the time is up to the commission from this time. Uh, I, you asked me to give you a suggestion how to make us listen. I like the idea, obviously, of uh, asking, looking, seeking an early meeting with the new uh, commissioner responsible. That is obviously the best uh, thing to do uh, after what I said uh, uh, during the electoral campaign, putting this high on the agenda. And um, uh, obviously, I think we have very good basis. You can build on, on what has been done uh, on the urban agenda on uh, the working groups you have. So uh, there is uh, enough substance. This will not be lost. I think this is completely uh, for sure. Now uh, it's a good uh, basis to build on. And uh, at least we as humble civil servants without dreams will have open ears. <laughs> I'm quite brief as well. I mean, that's exactly why I'm working uh, in all those committees on tax evasion, uh, tax uh, hiding, tax whatever, uh, uh, abusing. That's it. Because somehow, when you just look right now at the Austrian situation, there was introduced at national level uh, somehow a body for the huge so-called investors parking money in Austria in order to buy uh, to, to buy buildings where finally there are offices and whatever inside. 
And this is exactly the other way around. At the European Union, we are working hard. And I think everybody in this room should ask exactly those you, you would like to, uh, to vote for uh, the elections for the European Parliament. What are you doing against all this hiding taxes and buying whatever uh, uh, with, with money coming from obscure uh, destinations? So somehow, simply, that, that's why. Because we need this money. We need this money in order to go for social housing and also to buy, uh, to, to build hospitals and all that. So there's a direct, direct link, and we really have to do something on all these tax issues. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Mr. Bates? Thank you, Ruben, and thank you for your personal expression on the Brexit, which is out of my heart. <laughs> but unfortunately, the ball is across the channel at the moment. This being said, uh, you, you asked what we should do for the, for the next commission. I think the most important is to show quality. To, and this is what, where the action plan for housing comes in. It is, it is clear, it is clearly formulated, it is why we needed the partnership for housing, it is why we need the actions to be taken. And this is, it may only take a few words out of the regulation, but that would be the, a major breakthrough. So we have basically to lobby. And how this new commission will, will be composed, we will see. But f most important is go out and vote. <laughs> um, just on your EIB uh, remark, the, e the European Investment Bank have a roadshow at the moment with cities and regions where a city and region can actually email or write to the EIB. You can actually meet them in Brussels. Um, a delegation from Cork City Council, I brought them out to meet the EIB and they were able to ask direct questions going, well, what do you provide funding for? And that actually was really, really useful. But when we mentioned housing, social housing, um, yeah, the line was actually dropped.